What's going on, fine people of YouTube? Welcome back to the next part in the Rick and Morty app series. It dawned on me that I forgot to make all my 2023 and New Year's resolution jokes since I'm pre-recording all these videos, but I'll, I'll sneak some in, so not to worry. We're going to pick up where we left off on the location screen, particularly building out a nicer cell. Drop a like down below before we jump into things. Let's open up Xcode. Uh, in my case, it's been open for a bunch of days now. And let's continue onwards. So we have our uh, location table view cell that I did create. Now there's not really anything going on in here, but we are actually using the default text label. What we want to do instead of doing that is actually create a cell which is custom. And we have three properties here that we've exposed, which are all of type string. And what I want to do is in each of these cells, we can go and actually uh, assign those uh, text properties and see the labels. So that was a mouthful. Let me go ahead and create three labels here. We're going to do it once again with the anonymous closure pattern. If you are not familiar, that's what these curlies and you know having parents to auto invoke it are. We will create one of them, and I'm just gonna be lazy and copy and paste it. Well, I take that back. I'm gonna be efficient and copy and paste it. That's what engineers call it when we want to be uh, quick about things. I will go and say that this has a system font, and this is going to be a font of size perhaps 20 and a weight of perhaps medium. Let me copy and paste this. We have a name label, a type label, and a dimension label. For this, we'll leave the same font size. Maybe I'll change this to be regular. And for this, I will change it to be a light. This will be the dimension label. We're gonna to attempt to spell things correctly. Uh, emphasis on attempts. Now that we've got these here, let's actually add these. So we have a background color at the moment of system background. Let's get rid of this. Let's make this content view dot add subviews. We want it to be plural, so we're gonna say add subviews and let's add each of these labels. So I'll type label and we'll also bring in the dimension label. Let's say add some constraints since we wanna actually lay out these subview labels. And prepare for reuse, we're basically just gonna reset each of the subviews, so the name, the text, as well as the dimension, alrighty. And when we configure the cell with the view model, we are going to do the following. All we'll do is actually, let me just copy and paste it. We'll assign each of these uh, text properties, but we're, instead of assigning it to nil, we are just going to read it off of the view model. So type will be type, dimension is dimension, and name is name. Cool, good deal. So let's go ahead and add some constraints and then we can actually give it a build and run and see what actually happens. So looking at the cell, we want maybe the three labels to just be vertically positioned on top of one another. Um, you can optionally also like put another label on the right here, maybe like the type below it. It's a little subjective, but I'm gonna keep it simple. So first things first, we'll do the name label. It's going to be uh, constrained to the top anchor and I'll just copy and paste it a total of four times and just adjust these accordingly so we'll have left right uh, and let's actually ignore the bottom for a quick second here so for both the left and right we're gonna want some padding so from the right we're gonna move inwards 10 hence negative 10 here we're gonna have 10 from the left and maybe from the top we'll also do like 10 so we have some nice space and let's copy and paste this a total of twice. And the next label we're gonna have right below this will be the type label. The left and right will be identical, but the top uh, label, rather the top anchor of this will be from the bottom of the name label. So I'll say name label, bottom anchor, and this will again have a 10 point constant. This label here, you probably guessed already, is the dimension label and its top is going to be from the bottom of the type label. And this one is gonna have another constraint, which will be the bottom. And essentially this will be pinned to the bottom of the entire content view. So I'm just gonna model out in comments what we are trying to do here. Essentially, we are going to have 
our cell that kind of starts up here. Down here we'll have the bottom of the cell and then we'll have the name, the type, and then the label. Uh, then actually the dimension label is what I'm going for. So the bottom of the dimension label, we wanna pin to the bottom edge of the cell and the top of the name label, which is this line right here on line 48, we wanna pin to the top of the cell. So let me go ahead and build and run and go to that tab. We shouldn't actually see those labels come in yet. And the reason for that is back in our um, controller, if I'm not mistaken, Let's see, back in our view, if I'm not mistaken, actually, we are assigning the cells text label property, which we don't want to do anymore. Rather, we want to call this configure function and pass in our cell view model. Okay, so coming into locations, we now actually see each of these labels start to show up. So Earth is a planet, and here we have a cluster, we have a space station. In the case of um, some of these dimensions, it is unknown in some of these cases, hence we see unknown here. So I think this is looking pretty good. We have some subtle lines on up and below um, the actual cell content, but maybe we want this to look a little nicer. So what I'll actually do is I'm gonna create this table view and we're gonna create it with a uh, type or a style. So frame will be zero and we're gonna use the group style and this is really used for kind of sections if you have different sections, but one byproduct of using grouped is you can actually have this uh, change color and it looks a little nicer, I personally would say. In addition to doing so, let's actually prefix each of these with maybe, um, so planet would be a type and this would be a dimension. So maybe we'll just prefix the planet because dimension already kind of says what it is. So we'll go into the view model and for the type, what I'll return here is not just, just the type of the location, but prefix it with type, the capital T. And you'll notice that we're doing this in the view model and not the view directly, and that is totally intentional. We don't wanna put that logic in here. So let's go ahead and drop that comment. The other thing that would be nice is if we had like a disclosure indicator, otherwise known as like an arrow, or some people call it a chevron, that indicates to the user that, hey, they can actually uh, tap on it. So what we want to do is say accessory type is a disclosure indicator. Let's see if we can find it. So let's do that again. We'll do accessory type here is a UI table view cell accessory type. And sometimes autocomplete decides to just be a gigantic pain and not work. So if it does do that, you can type it out manually. We'll do UI table view cell accessory type and you'll actually see the various options available to you when you hit dot now. So we have check mark, we have a detail button. What I care to use is a, a detail disclosure indicator and now I can drop this prefix. And let's see why it's yelling at me. So it is yelling at me because cannot assign to immutable expression of type the accessory type. Okay, of course, that makes sense. This needs to be the actual property here. So this needs to be accessory type, all right, lowercase. Go ahead and give that a run. And we have arrows now, hopefully, on the right-hand side. And actually, this shows you the info. So I just wanna see disclosure indicator. There's two very similarly typed uh, named ones. So cool, we now have these like little arrows, which I think look a whole lot nicer. And let's actually tweak the font size just a smidge because our name and these other things are very similarly sized and they might be a little confusing. So I'll actually change this here and I'll also change the type labels text color to be a secondary label, which will just make it lighter. And for the dimension, I'll make this a tertiary label, which will make it even lighter. Let's come back to this. Okay, cool. I think this is actually more reasonable now. We have uh, everything showing up. This tertiary color is incredibly light, so maybe I'll be nitpicky and change this back to secondary label. Looking pretty good. Um, now, of course in here, we're not uh, doing a whole lot. We just have kind of a list of locations, but we do wanna be able to select it and open up uh, location details. So that'll be the last thing we'll do in this video. And we're gonna leverage the delegate here for our particular uh, location view. And we already implemented the function, we stubbed it out. When the user taps on one of these particular 
uh, cells, we want to notify via a protocol delegate. We are going to say that this view uh, did, rather, let me, let me fix the naming here. So this will be RM location view, and this will be location view of this type did select location, RM location. We want to hang on to this delegate protocol in a weak uh, capacity. We also want it to be public. And we'll come down here and we can now actually say delegates, go ahead and call that single function self for the view. And we wanna get the character. So how do we get the character? The way we get it is rather simple. We wanna get the view model at the given selection. So I'll copy and paste this from what we had previously written. The target view model, I'll just call it view model, will be in cell view models. And this will be at indexpath.row and we want to get basically the location off of this. So we actually haven't exposed the location directly. If we actually go to uh, the view model, let me jump into the view model for this. All right, let me close up controller since we have way too many things open. But if we jump into the view model, so cell view models is actually uh, a collection view, rather a array getting all my terms mixed up, and it does hold the location internal to it, but we don't wanna publicize it just to use it by the view because that kind of breaks the convention of what we're trying to do. We do hold the location directly on here, so a better way to approach this is we could just say public func location at index, and what we want to return is we are simply going to return a rm location optional, and we can say return from locations, self.locations, the thing at the index. And just in case this location is, or the index is greater than uh, or equal to the locations count, we know that it'll be out of range. So we'll return nil here, right? So if the index is 10, keep in mind that arrays are enumerated or indexed from zero, we're only gonna have indices zero to nine. So if it's greater than or equal to the number of things in this array, we wanna return nil. So let's come back to our view. And now when we call this function, instead of having to do all of this stuff, what I can do is simply say view model. And let me actually get rid of this guard. We no longer need it. We can actually say in here, view model and we're going to say give me the location at this particular integer this index and keep in mind this returns a optional so we want to unwrap it and this is actually going to give us our location model back and we'll pass this in here go ahead and give it a build and everything should be good to go let's see why this is yelling this error is just probably transient yep went away Builds and run, we'll tap on a location. Nothing is happening right now because we haven't hooked up that delegate, but we are in a good stopping point now. In the next video, we'll hook up the delegate of this and start talking about the uh, location detail screen. So thanks for sticking around. Drop a like before clicking on to the next part. Leave a comment if you've had any issues, technical or otherwise. If you have any other suggestions of how this screen should be built, love to hear it. Appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next part.